So um, I'm just thinking about, again, about the time that you started with the CBC. Um, so you wouldn't probably have had any occasion to interact with Healy Willen. Uh, no. Because he, he died in 68, I think. Yeah, and, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I did, yeah. I recorded a lot of a lot of his things over the years. It's, and one of my happier memories is a recording we did with his choir at St. Mary Magdalene's, like a private recording afterwards. But his daughter, Mary Mason, was always very, very friendly to me. We had a great time together. Yeah. And still going strong. She is, yeah, amazing. <laughs> Now, uh, thinking of, of, of uh, Healy Willen's choral music and so forth, I can't help but again think of Elmer Eisler. Mm, uh, yeah. You worked with him a lot. I worked with you? Elmer a lot. Yeah. yeah. Tell me about that. Oh, it was. We used to. Well, James Kent, after I worked with him on the symphony for quite a while, he started asking, you know, asking for me to do other recordings. And. and we used to have, I think it was every other week, we'd have a session on Friday at, at St. Saint, Saint Anne's Church in Toronto with the festival singers back in those days. And so we were recording like every, every, other, every other Friday we were recording festival singers on a regular basis, you know, almost right through the year. So I worked a lot with Elmer on that. And then of course, Elmer did, the Mendelssohn with the Toronto Symphony at Massey Hall several times, and uh, so so I got got to know Elmer quite well. We we were good friends, and Jesse. And uh, there's a story. There's a story that uh, Elmer was on an adjudication panel. It could have been could have been for the uh, the. The, um, Canada Council? Or no, the, the choir. Remember the contest CBC used to run every year? Yes. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. And and they had to, the choirs had to record a tape and send in a tape for submission. And Elmer was on one of the panels adjudicating these. And uh, I wasn't there at the time, but word got back to me after a while that, you know, they'd been sitting in the, in the studio on CBC for days listening to all these different tapes coming in and coming in and apparently at one point one tape came up and after about two bars of listening Elmer says Ed Marshall <laughs> he picked out the, the tape right away he said <laughs> interesting yeah interesting and that was obviously a compliment yeah yeah so what was he hearing in that recording that that got him to immediately identify it as an Ed Marshall recording. Well, you'd have to ask Elmer, but, but I don't know. I always, my my aim was always to get as natural a sound as possible, you know, and, and use like use the use the environment. A, a lot of I've always said there are two types of engineers. There's there's the type that that. Are classically trained dealt with classical music your whole life. There's the other type that have come up through the studio process, and they're, they're working in a studio. In a studio, you're basically eliminating any of the room, mm -hmm. and in a classical, more more than fifty percent of what you hear is is the room. So you're in one case you're using the room, in the other case you're not, and and it affects the type of sound that you get. And I've always been, you know, I've always came up through the classical side of it. I've always, a few times I've been in a studio and I've felt really quite a awkward sort mm -hmm. of thing. I'm never really happy with it, but I guess obviously it was that, that sort of that sound that, you know, the sound that I captured that, that Elmer picked out right away, so. Well, I mean, it, so it obviously speaks to your uh, prowess as a recording engineer, which um, is no news to those of us in the business. You know, you're a legendary figure and have been for a very, very long time. It also speaks to Elmer's exceptional ears, right? I mean, he yeah, he, yeah. Uh, he had a pretty keen sense, didn't he? He did, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it was always something that amazed me about him is the, 
particular sound. He said that about, you know, your recording, and I would have said that about his choirs. You know, his choirs yeah. had a, there was a particular mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, Eisler sound yeah. that is, is hard to um, describe in a way, but quite definite. You know, it had, yeah. it had, it yeah. had its own very wonderful character, actually. Exactly. Um, and, and I guess if I were to compare that to anything, it would, it would remind me quite a bit of the Swedish choral sound, you know, that, that, that the whole Scandinavian right. choral yeah, tradition. Eric which, Erickson. Yeah, yeah. Where, where there's a very, it's a very healthy sound, yeah. but it's also very clean. You talked about wanting uh, and, and preferring a, a natural um, sound um, and using, using the space um, to best advantage where, where you have to be. Mm. 